Hello, all my wonderful subscribers and followers. Welcome to any newcomers. It's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your February 2024 general reading. We're looking at the first half of February from the 1st through the 15th, roughly time always being a little fluid. And this reading is for our beautiful bulls, the earth sign of Taurus. That's Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus. If you're cross-watching for a Taurus, uh, it is also relevant. If you know all of your sign placements, sun, moon, rising, Venus, watch those for additional insight and perspective. It's a general reading, so of course it'll resonate a little differently for everyone. Take what, what resonates and is helpful and leave the rest behind. If you find that something really does resonate with you and you'd like to take a deeper look at it, or you simply like the reading style, if you are interested in a personal reading with me, either for yourself or as a gift for someone else, uh, please email me, Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. You can also see that contact info attached to the title or description of this video. I would love to hear from you. And I can usually get back to you the same day or within the first 24 hours with more information. Uh, I do offer a pretty wide variety of readings uh, in all areas of life of all different types, slants, costs, spreads, or something in there for everyone. Still very popular right now are six and 12 month overviews, which give you a look ahead in uh, all different areas of life and what's coming uh, for the next six or 12 months, depending on how far ahead you want to look. You can order them any time of the year. They simply go from the time of the reading forward, but end of one year, first part of a new year, they're always quite popular, you know, as we start a new annual cycle. So it's something to keep in mind. All right. I am using the uh, Deluxe Tarot by artist Ciro Marchetti, and for clarification, I'll be using the Gold Foil Radiant Rider Weight deck. Let's see what's coming, first half of February, for Taurus, our lovely bulls. Okay, Taurus, we begin with the Nine of Coins. Independence, self-sufficiency, self-empowerment. Somebody who's worked hard to get to a place where they're now enjoying the fruits of their labors, the benefits of that. It's a card of self-confidence and empowerment. With the High Priestess, trusting your instincts and your intuition, which really is our connection to spirit. You know, that indefinable thing that pulls us one way or another, regardless of what outside circumstances dictate. Sometimes people call that uh, gut instinct, higher self, intuition, paying attention to that. Using kind of that third eye energy, being quiet, watching, waiting. Next we have the Seven of Wands. This is a defensive card. Not aggressive, but defensive. It speaks of standing up for yourself or someone else, standing up for what you believe in, um, not giving up on something, not backing down, not compromising. With that, we have the Seven of Coins. Uh, it's obvious to see what you're defending. The Seven of Coins represents um, what we've invested in. It's more of a card of taking stock and taking inventory. What have our efforts gleaned us, right? This is how much effort I put into this person, place, situation. This is what I have to show for it. Does the end justify the means? With the Seven of Wands, it kind of begs the question, do I want to fight for what I've built, worked for, or invested in, or put my effort into, or do I want to move on? Some of you, this is already a decision that you've made to continue fighting for something that you, you have a lot invested in. And by fighting, this can mean like an actual legal battle, um, just, and others of you, you're questioning whether or not something is worth fighting for that you have invested in. But I think many of you, you're already making the decision to not give up on something, to continue uh, fighting for it, defending it. Well, perhaps not being aggressive about it, but defending it. Could be being aggressive about it for some of you. Next, we have the star, renewed, restored, hope, faith, and optimism. I like the progression of this reading because the star is a card of renewal, rebuilding, hope, faith, and optimism. And the re part is because in the tarot, the star comes after the tower, which is usually, not always, but often a challenging card that represents 
you know, um, a perhaps unexpected event that comes in and shakes everything down to the ground um, or, or ends something, right? And then the star comes after that to renew, restore hope, faith, and optimism. After the smoke clears, it's kind of realizing that as long as you continue to devote yourself to the path, meaning doing everything that's in front of you to do, then this path will lead to your joy and fulfillment because this is the secondary wish fulfillment, wish granted card in the tarot. So I kind of like the progression of this, you know, not giving up, plugging forward, um, and having success because <laughs> with the star, we have the six of wands, which is a card of major significant success and victory. After a challenge, after a battle of some kind, after some level of effort, here it is. You have hope and faith that your efforts will give you the results and the outcome you want. From the bottom of the deck, the overall energy and focus for the first half of February Taurus is the Eight of Coins. So coins is also pentacles in other decks. It's, it's, it's earth energy, so the Eight of Earth. This is often my work card, nose to the grindstone, working hard to build up stability and security for yourself long term, paying attention to detail, uh, working hard, kind of nose to the groundstone, burning the grindstone, burning the candle at both ends. Some of you working hard towards something you don't want to give up on. And again, this could be anything from a job, from a project, from a home, from for a legal perspective, some kind of challenge here or something you're putting a lot of effort into. So let's clarify that overall energy of the eight of coins. <laughs> the eight of coins is clarified by the eight of pentacles, which is the same thing. Working hard, like really, this is like really paying strong attention, putting a lot of detail, effort, attention into something. The page of pentacles, page of earth here, messages coming in, probably positive messages, the beginning of something starting to develop that leads towards, you know, some kind of long-term security and stability with the two of pentacles, which represent juggling many things, um, you know, juggling multiple things. There's an awful lot of earth energy here. I mean, so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six cards that are earth energy cards, pentacles and coins. Uh, working on more than one thing, juggling many things, paying attention to detail. Something is developing um, simply because of the sheer level of attention and effort and detail you're putting into it. Whether it's something you're just actually working on building or building towards or it's an actual challenge, struggle, battle, or fight because it's, I mean, it could be a legal battle or issue as well. Let's take a look at that Nine of Coins and High Priestess, trusting your instincts and your intuition um, solely, no matter what, what, I mean, the High Priestess is about trusting that gut instincts and intuition. The Nine of Coins, again, there's a strong element of material things here, financial, material, security things here. The Nine of Coins is not just about being financially independent and stable, it's that. But it's also a sense of, I mean, there's a strong sense of independence. You know, I don't want to have to rely on anyone else here. And with the High Priestess, the High Priestess is also a very independent card because she, you can put he in here as well, goes on their own instincts, their own intuition as well. So let's take a look at that. It almost feels like some of you are going, I, I know this is going to work out. If I just keep pushing at it, if I just keep pushing at it, oh, my card just went all over the place. Um, no matter what anybody else is telling me, um, it may be that you've got some naysayers or people saying, you should just give up on this. This isn't going to, you know, this isn't going to work out. But you're like, no, I really, there's something in me that says that it can. So let's take a look at that. <coughs> we have... The Ace of Pentacles. <laughs> so it could be, um, so this is another Earth Energy card and the number one, so the start of something new. So this could be a new job. This is a practical, logistical new beginning. So it could be a new job, a new project, moving, relocating, 
a perhaps unexpected sum of money that allows you to have a new start moving forward. Ten of Cups, the Happy Home card. This could be uh, related to your residence, to your living environment. You could be moving or gaining money, getting money so that you can move um, into a different place or into a new place. Um, and, and it could be a new job as well, or it could be some combination of the two. It's something towards um, the, the general health and well-being of your home and family, whatever that means for you. Pulled another card, the Knight of Swords. Very, this kind of goes along with that Seven of Wands. The Knight of Swords is moving forward, taking the information you have, the knowledge, the research you have, and moving forward to manifest with that. This is about having a plan and enacting that plan. It's a smart, it's a practical card. It's a very decisive, action-oriented card. Let's take a look at that Seven of Wands, Seven of Coins. Defending that which you've worked for or that which you're working towards. Three of Wands, something for your long-term future, security, and stability. This is a card that also represents seeing some of your, your efforts paying off as you're working towards a larger goal and feeling much more po hopeful, positive, and optimistic about the future. A again, it feels like, okay, you're starting to see your efforts, all these efforts paying off, and that kind of inspires you and incentivizes you to push even harder towards, you know, <laughs> Nine of Cups, your wish fulfillment, that ultimate that thing that you're working towards, justice, reaping what you sow. Everything that you get here is, is as a result of the efforts that you're putting into it. Now, justice might represent that there may be some legal issues involved in here as well. It could be a legal challenge or, or battle that you're fighting, you know, that institutional energy. Um, but very assertive, I know I'm going to win. I know I'm going to get to the end of this. I know I'm going to have the outcome I want. Let's take a look at the star and the six of wands. does look like at the end here you win or you're 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 almost certainly there or close to being there we have the sun <laughs> the most positive card in the tarot light love warmth laughter not only that but but the sun illuminates it clarifies it shines on everything and it automatically lifts up any feelings of heaviness, of pressure, of restrictions. Six of Swords, healing. Putting the past behind you, the difficulty behind you, and moving to a more peaceful, placid, harmonious state. Now you're not quite to the other shore and on solid ground yet, but you're headed into the right you're headed in the right direction. That shore is within your sights here. It's a beautiful, beautiful reading, uh, Taurus. Um, I think this is mostly around financial, tangible security. It, it might be specifically related to money for some of you. Again, there could be some legal issues or challenges here. I mean, in terms of relationship, I'm not getting picking up much relationship vibe other than something that improves the life of your home and family. But for some of you, it might be particularly if you're going through a kind of a separation or divorce where there has to be kind of you know, a division of assets and you're kind of fighting for what you believe is yours um, kind of energy as well. But it's an absolutely beautiful, very positive energy. And again, it comes from, and herein is the advice, the effort and attention to detail that you put in it, you know, not procrastinating, not cutting corners, not, you know, leaving anything out or, or you know, okay, if I have this to do, it's a headache, but I'm going to do it right away and get it out there and get it out of the way kind of energy. So let's see if there's any final guidance or messages for you from Spirit for the first half of February, Taurus. Yep, the world, the last major arcana card in the tarot. Some significant cycle is wrapping up for you so that you can start over again in a brand new landscape full of different options and opportunities. Here we have that high priestess again. Pay attention to your instincts and your intuition and allow that to be the thing that directs you. 
the chariot. The chariot implies the challenge. This is a card that represents success, but it's success that comes from a very specific, walking a very specific path. You know, we have a goal. The goal is in the chariot as well. But there's two things that are operating the chariot, sphinxes, horses. It depends on the, the depiction, right? And sometimes, you know, they want to go in different directions. Sometimes this can be our mind, our heart kind of warring with each other. There's this goal that you want. So it's about, you know, it's about staying focused on that goal, not allowing anything to distract you or pull you away or slow you down or make you start thinking, no, oh, well, maybe I should slow down or maybe I should do this different. No, it's about staying focused towards that goal, pulling everything together and just powering through um, three of cups, celebration, parties, uh, you know, positive social connections in your community. It's really a celebration card, which is, is where this is headed as long as you stay focused and you keep pouring all of that into all of that effort into whatever this is for you um, and trusting your instincts and your intuition to guide you along the way. That's where your very strong success and healing comes from, Taurus. Wonderful, wonderful reading. Well, I'm going to leave it there, Taurus. Those are your messages for the first half of February 2024. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, somewhat helpful for you, maybe clarified a few things for you or reassured you in some way. Again, if this did resonate with you and you'd like to uh, maybe peel the curtain back and take a deeper look at it, or you simply resonate with the reading style, if you're interested in a reading with me, either for yourself or as a gift for someone else, please email me, Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to hear from you and even more delighted to uh, work with you. And again, you can see that email address attached to the title or description of this video. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the February mid-month readings. Until then, stay safe, stay well. Hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.